Hey, Donald Miller, Donald Miller's Electrical Services. It is August 27th, okay? And um, I'm just going to do a two-part small little video here, okay? Um, so, the first part. All right, and this is dealing with guys, I guess, that are wasting away they're early, like helpers, entry level apprentices, you know, some jump right into the trade. They, they, they follow guidance and they're on their learning process and away they go. They're, they're on their way to be becoming a mechanic. Okay. But then there's guys that think their twenties are never going to end. And it's almost like a failure to launch, so to speak. Like they're, they're, they're treating it as if it's just another summer job. And, you know, to those guys, and, you know, we're, we're getting close to the end of the summer. So it's time to decide what summer help stays and what summer help goes. And, you know, the ones that go are the ones that view every day as a party on a job site. They're not taking their, their career seriously. And, you know, they're usually the ones that are lagging behind on pay. And if you don't correct the behavior, depending on where you are in the field, it could hinder your income for the, your entire career. Your first two years entering into the trade are the most important two years, okay? And it, it's gonna decide how well you learn, how well you pay attention, how well you listen. Your habits and rituals that you form within the first two years are gonna play a key role in your abilities in this trade, without a doubt, without a doubt, okay? That's why I tell guys, as soon as they get going, you know, build good sleep habits, show up early, build good habits when you walk onto a job site. Don't, like, try to build responsibilities for yourself right off the bat. Don't sit there and be wait and wait to be told what to do. It is the worst habit you can have. So if I, and this, this trade is vast, there's union, there's non-union, there's, there's so many avenues in the electrical trade to go down. Okay. If you're in a situation where you don't have a step program, and what I mean by a step program is helper, first year apprentice, and you don't have to call it apprentice, first year guy, whatever you want to call it, second year apprentice, okay? Then you could call it like um, third year could be entry level mechanic, fourth year could be mechanic, fifth year could be seasoned mechanic, and then after seasoned mechanic, master mechanic, something along those lines. But that's a, there's a step process to that. Okay, if your company doesn't have some type of step program that shows you what you need to do for each step to get to the next pay rate so you can get mechanics rate eventually, then you need to go to a different company or you need to find a company that is training people based on that type of step program. Okay, because that is where you see where you have to change and you know each level and what you need to do to get to that level. Okay, apprentices that are like gophers and they don't have any foundation in the trade. They're the ones that 10 years from now, they're barely making a different rate because they just was the gopher to a mechanic and no one ever properly trained them other than being a gopher.
So don't go down that road. It's a, it's a really nasty road and you'll become passive aggressive and you know, you'll, you'll start getting a chip on your shoulder and you know, that's where I'm going to take this into this. There, there's an apprentice that's out in New York that, that calls in. Okay. And he doesn't like the guys who train him, and he keeps telling me how the people should be training him. And, you know, I, I listened to him for like 20 minutes. All right. At the end of the 20 minutes, I'm like, you don't get to decide how people train you. You acclimate this individual to their training, okay? They already have the knowledge. They already have the skill. They're already a mechanic. They're already a foreman. It is you, the entry-level guy, you're the one that has to change, not them, okay? And this guy's like, oh, I should just get, he gets a little passive aggressive. He goes, I guess I'll just get yelled at all day. Yeah, sometimes if you deserve it, if you're that bullheaded or if you're at that level of entry level and you have a chip on your shoulder, yeah, you're going to get torn apart until your ego gets bashed down and you, you eat a little humble pie. Yes, okay, you're going to all day long probably get made fun of or get yelled at, okay? And first and foremost, if it was during my apprenticeship, you know, Fuzzy probably would have told me, you know, get a thicker skin. Bottom line. Like, if your feelings are being hurt constantly, it's time to get a thicker skin. Okay, because you're going to get yelled at constantly in the beginning of this trade. You're, it, it, it's part of the trade because, one, you're dealing with guys that, are already mechanics. They're already seasoned. They don't have to change anything about them. Their pay is fine. They go home to a family. They built their life. You as an entry level want what they have. And if you want what they have, you're the one that has to change. They don't. They're not gonna change. They're fine, all right? So, if you're entering into this trade and you, you want to learn and you want to advance, then you have to acclimate to your mechanic and learn from him. And if you don't like that, whatever company you go to, it doesn't matter what company you're in, you're going to get put with an older gentleman, okay? That older gentleman is set in his ways, he, his ways are successful because obviously he has a higher position than you are, all right? So you have to bend to him. He doesn't bend to you. He doesn't have to change his teaching style. If you don't like his teaching style, go somewhere else. Another apprentice will come along and like his teaching style. I don't change how I teach. I've been I, the only, okay, let me put it to you this way. I teach the way I was taught because that's what I know best, okay? So how I was taught this trade is the same way I teach my apprentices because how I was taught rendered me this outcome. So I know that teaching method works. So I, I might put my own spin on it a little bit, but I don't change the lessons, okay? I don't change, like, you know, how to save money, talking about not living to 100% of your paycheck. All these things were taught to me, taught to me sitting in a van when it was raining out or it was cold and I couldn't run away. My mechanic gave me doses of reality that I didn't like, but I took them. And as I stayed in the trade, I adopted them, and the more I adopted, the more better my life at home became, and then I really started listening to every word they said, because every time they gave me good, every, every time they gave me advice, my living situation would improve, so I, I eventually became just a 
an open vessel and they could fill me. Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't listening to every person on a job site because there's a bunch of freaking jackasses on a job site. I was listening to the select few mechanics, one being my mentor, that I knew would give me solid advice. They're the ones I would listen to. Everyone else, I would just have a dome on. I would hear it. I'm not saying I would just ignore it. I would hear it. But I'm not saying that I would take every advice that was given to me. So, I guess that's really it. You know, don't, one, don't waste your 20s. And two, acclimate to your mechanic. Your mechanic does not have to acclimate to you. All right. It's Tuesday. God bless. Enjoy yourselves out there.